Hey y'all, it's Friday, is what I would be saying if it were Friday, and if I was posting this video on Out of This Binary, which it is not, and I am not, because I missed my video on Friday, because my class schedule has been absolutely crazy, and Fridays are hell for me now. But this week we had a really important topic, and so even though I missed my day, I still wanted to make a video about it, so I'm just going to be uploading this to my personal channel. And I'm making this video at night, and my lighting is terrible, and my hair is terrible, and I'm wrapped up in a blanket, and bleh. But, moving on. This week's topic was mental health. That is a really huge topic for me. So I wasn't sure even if I was going to wind up making a video for Out of This Binary if I would be able to fit everything I wanted to say about it into one video. And so I'm just gonna try to get everything I have to say out in one shooting. And if it winds up being too much, then I'll just maybe cut it into separate videos or I might just post one really long one. I don't know. But moving into this, I would like to put some trigger warnings at the beginning for things like depression, anxiety, hospitalization, suicide, self-harm, um, dysphoria, um, disassociation. Uh, how do we even get started at talking about this? Okay, so as probably none of you know, as um, this was a period of my life that ended about two years ago and I have since moved and so very few people who knew me before my recovery I'm still in contact with and very few people that I know now knew me when I was really bad. So I'm just going to start out by talking about my own personal experiences with mental health and mental illness. In the time I was about 14 I was severely depressed. Um, like clinically diagnosed on in therapy on a ton of medication depressed and that affected pretty much every aspect of my life during high school I skipped a lot of classes I barely attended class actually I wasn't a very good friend to people spent a lot of my time staying home faking sick staring out the window I also suffered with issues of self-harm since I was about 12 years old. I just don't really know how to talk about this without making it sound like a horrible sob story because it's not, like, on the end of it it's not really, but it's difficult for me to go back there without making it sound absolutely horrible, which I guess it was. It's not like a laughing matter. It was really scary for myself and my friends and my family, but basically that got worse through most of my teens. I really tried like seeking better mental health care because I was basically just like seeing the school counselor while I was at my first high school and then I had to transfer to a different high school because I was in a really scary abusive relationship um, which a lot of people thought was the catalyst for my depression but it was just like it was a contributing factor but it wasn't like the main thing. Um, and then when I got to the new high school, I couldn't get in to see the counselor there because it was a much larger school. Eventually, I got to the point where I kept asking over and over again to see the school counselor and they couldn't make an opening for me. And the guidance worker, I remember coming up to me one day when I was in the hall and I asked her about it and she said, well, you know, we kind of have to put out the biggest fires first. For me, aesthetic has always been kind of a coping mechanism where it's like, if I can't put my life together, at least I can put myself together almost. Like, I've always tried to make myself feel good and tried to make myself feel in control of my life by putting a lot of care into my presentation and my clothes and my hair and all of that stuff. I'm, ver I'm a very visually and aesthetically oriented person and so I was wearing red lipstick that day and she said, well you know we kind of have to put out the biggest fires first and since you're wearing red lipstick you obviously can't be that depressed. So that was kind of a last straw for me. I think I had already quit my job at that point because I kept crying on the sales floor for no reason. And they didn't give me a hard time about it, but I just couldn't handle it. I remember my mom was driving me to work one day, and I just started sobbing, like, in the passenger seat. And she was like, what's wrong? And we wound up having this whole conversation in the parking lot. And I was like, I'm so depressed. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it through this, basically. 
and she called an emergency hotline in the car and put me on the phone with them while she was sitting there and they kept asking me like do you think you're in immediate danger of taking your own life or like hurting yourself or hurting someone else and I mean like I was sitting there with my mom so I was just like no I don't think it's that much of an issue and then they were like okay well then you're probably fine and then just you know no no help was there unless it was like life-threatening to me or someone else and so after that I just walked into my work and quit and that was right before the guidance counselor had told me that I wasn't a big enough fire to be receiving counseling and so after she told me that I pretty much made up my mind that if I didn't take matters into my own hands nothing was gonna change for me and so that night I went home and I packed my things and I can't believe I'm like telling you guys this entire story I feel like this is almost like too much for YouTube but that night I went home and packed my things I typed up an email and I found a delayed email sending service so that you could create an email to be sent at a specific date and time. I contacted my friend who was going to school in Sudbury, which is about five hours north of where I was living, and I got dropped off at school with my stuff that I had packed. It was just in my backpack instead of my school supplies. As soon as I got dropped off, I waited for class to start, and then I walked across town to the bus depot and I bought a ticket and I took a bus to Sudbury. I ran away from home. That didn't help in itself. Um, at the time, like, the whole, like, running away thing did not help my mental health at all. Um, the person that I was staying with was also very unstable and dealing with their own mental health issues probably more severe than mine and thought that it would be a good idea for them to be giving me their Valium to help me with my anxiety, um, which it wasn't because I wound up self-harming a lot while I was there and then passing out from the Valium. They came home and found me listening to my chemical romance on my earphones while fast asleep on the carpet and they bandaged me up and said that they had to take me to the hospital. I had been dealing with severe suicidal ideation for a year at that point and I did consider the running away thing to be kind of a last ditch effort before I did something serious and so they took me to the hospital and checked me in on a form 1 which basically means suicide watch and I was admitted to a Sudbury Children's Mental Health Institution place because I was I think 17 at the time and yeah, that's where the fun begins. Running away was not directly beneficial to my mental health in any way, but I also feel like because the mental health system is so fucked up, if I didn't do something that radical, I never would have gotten any help at all. And so I kind of, as horrible as it was, I kind of needed to do that to just get the ball rolling on the mental health issue in hindsight. And so yeah, I was in the hospital for two weeks and then I was let out with a care plan, you know, a list of coping strategies and all that stuff and I said I wasn't gonna self-harm anymore and all that jazz. And then I wound up getting admitted again about a month later because I wasn't feeling any better and they were putting me on a ton of medications. I was on like antipsychotics and antidepressants and SSRIs and things that made my vision blurry, like horrible, horrible medication. And they kept throwing around diagnosis. Like the first thing I was actually diagnosed with was major depressive disorder. And then um, they said that they thought I might have bipolar two disorder, but bipolar two is like, an actual neurological problem in your brain and I didn't have manic episodes, I just had episodic depression where my depression was like 
at like a standard level and then would have like catastrophic lows. The bipolar diagnosis got dismissed. Then I had another admission for a month. The Sudbury Children's Hospital was actually really good. Like the food there wasn't bad. They had video games. They made you exercise every day, which was actually helpful. And they focused on like meditation and mindfulness exercises and stuff like that to try to help you cope with um, mental health issues, which is a very helpful um, way of dealing with it that I'll probably talk more about later. I didn't find it very helpful at the time, but I did find it helpful later on. Definitely if you're like having thoughts of um, suicide or anything like that, um, check your check yourself into a hospital. Um, it doesn't fix things, but even just being in an environment that's like controlled and you don't have any responsibility and there are people monitoring you is helpful. At least in like making you feel safe and taking a load off for a while. I mean, when it comes to recovering from any mental illness, like the work is on you and that's the worst part of it, I think, is that when you are depressed you just want it to be over and you just want to not feel that way anymore and you don't think it's anything to do with you you're not like oh it's my thought patterns or oh it's my lifestyle or anything like that like you just want like a quick fix and the problem is is that there is no quick fix it's like if you're gonna recover from depression then that's like months or years of work that you're going to do to put into that but the hospital environment can help for facilitating that and then i was out of the hospital for a few months after that and then i actually got admitted on my 18th birthday because i didn't want to be a woman and that goes back to like where all of this stuff kind of came from for me i felt like I was growing up and that that really compounded my depression. I mean, my depression had been going on for most of my teenage years, but then as I was nearing 18, it was just getting worse and worse because um, I was still identifying as female. Um, I, the idea of being transgender had not occurred to me at that point. Um, it's not something that I had any knowledge or um, access to information about. As I was nearing 18, people were just saying to me, like, oh, you're gonna be a woman, and you're such a beautiful young woman, and it was just really horrible, like, when I was close to becoming a legal adult, because just the idea of being a woman felt so wrong, and so, like, not something that was supposed to be happening to me, but I didn't know that there was any other options when it came to gender. Like, I didn't know that gender and sex were a different thing. I didn't know anything like that. It just felt kind of cursed. And so the idea that I was going to grow up and be a woman, the only logical explanation I had was that I just wasn't supposed to grow up. And I just wasn't supposed to make it to adulthood. And that my life just was supposed to, like, have a cap and I wasn't supposed to live past 18. Like, it's like, life becomes more gendered the older you get, and the limitations of gender become more and more prevalent in your life the older that you get, so like, I saw no examples of any form of womanhood that was anything that I could even, like, moderately see myself in. Like, not even a little tiny bit. Um, and so I just thought that, like, okay, that's not going to be me. I guess I'm just not going to grow up since I don't think that there are any other options than just being a woman, and I definitely cannot be a woman, then I just have to kill myself. And that's pretty brutal and horrible, but that was my thought pattern at the time when I was 17. And so I got admitted again to the adult facility, um, when I, it was my 18th birthday because I was severely depressed. I didn't want anything to do with my birthday. And when my parents asked me about it, I was like, I'm not doing any better. Like I started crying and they were like, are you safe? Like, are you going to do something? And I was like, I don't know, to be honest, like, I don't know. And so they were just like, okay, we're going to the hospital. And I was like, fuck you. But I mean, they didn't have any other options, so 
I wasn't there for very long because the adult facility is a lot more brutal and a lot more like in and out than the child facility. Um, they're not really too focused on like helping you personally. Like there aren't really that many like workshops or exercise programs or anything like that. The adult facility was a lot less healthy of an environment. Um, I started smoking when I was there just because it was the only excuse to go outside. And I think I was only there for six days or maybe 10 days. Um, and then I was out of the hospital again for a month. And then I was in the hospital again mid-July. My birthday was June 11th and I was in the hospital again mid-July when I actually tried to kill myself. I feel like this is way too much, like I feel like this is way too heavy and people are going to be judging me for talking about this stuff. Shortly before my last two admissions, my friend had come out to me as genderqueer. And that was the first time I'd ever heard a word that described how I felt. And so they came out to me as genderqueer and I was like, what? Like, what? That's a, that's a thing? That's a thing you can do? That's a thing you can be? Are there, like, adults who do that? I was like, hmm, I really relate to that. And then, like, a day later, I was like, <laughs> can you call me they? But I didn't really know, like, even once I found out about it, it wasn't really that helpful because I talked to a few of my friends and I was like, hey, so I'm kind of thinking I'm genderqueer and can you please call me they pronouns? And they were like, um, sure, maybe no, though. After I tried to talk to my parents about it and I tried to talk to my friends about it and they were really not receptive to it at all, like, that kind of, like, just solidified the fact that there weren't any other gender options for me, which resulted in the last two admissions that I had to the hospital, but once I actually um, had a suicide attempt, I feel like that was like the beginning of the end of my depression because it made me see how it would affect my family and my friends and my best friend and my partner came to visit me in the hospital and they brought me like a box of strawberries and a container of Nutella because strawberries and Nutella were like my favorite food and they took me out driving because they got um, a visit path, a visit exception thing from the hospital and I don't know it just kind of like kicked my head that if that death wasn't worth it and that if I was going to stay alive then I needed to start doing what ever I had to do. So that took a bunch of different forms, like I started cutting people out of my life, like people who were abusive or just toxic relationships, like I just cut them out. Um, I stopped self-abusing a month later, I'm I think in August, and I haven't since. I like cut and burned for four years and I stopped in a month and I haven't for two years, just over two years, two and a half years. I started going to therapy with a different therapist, but it wasn't really the therapy that helped. Like that's the problem with therapy is that it only is what you make of it. I mean, obviously you need a good therapist and you need to be in the right kind of therapy, like cognitive behavioral therapy or dialectic behavioral therapy. But if you have those things, still therapy is only as helpful as you want it to be. And so, like, all of the work really has to come from you, and you really have to be motivated to change your life. But after my suicide attempt, I really was. My dad just sat me down and said, if it's really bad enough to end your life, then what do you need to change? Like, if you could do anything in the world, if there were no limitations, what would you do? And so, after that, I just really started thinking about that, like, what did I want to do with my life? Like, what did I have to do with my life to make it livable for me? Um, and that meant a lot of things. Like, that meant, um, that meant going to art school and doing a lot more art. That meant writing. That meant, um, like, eating well and 
taking care of myself, like taking care of myself was the biggest mental switch. Like I started taking baths, I started um, making myself nice food um, instead of punishing myself for things and instead of taking things out on myself, I started just treating myself like a different person that I had to take care of. Like if you just think of yourself as your friend and you think that you have to treat yourself the same way you would treat a friend who was doing the same things, then it becomes a lot easier. I really started taking care of myself after that and I wound up coming out as transgender in January of that year. I didn't come out as non-binary, I came out as transmasculine because of the whole like people not taking the non-binary thing seriously. But that, like, even just coming out as transmasculine was extremely helpful for me because I just needed to not be a woman. And then I was identifying as transmasculine for like a year before I finally dealt with the fact that I actually had to live as non-binary. But yeah, after that whole thing, it pretty much just completely changed my perspective on life and I realized that life is not worth living if you're not going to be authentic to yourself but it is very worth living if you're willing to be authentic to yourself and you're willing to take those risks and really um, reinforce who you are in every aspect of your life and not let anything destroy you. Like, there are so many things in my life that were just destroying me. Like, my some friendships that I had that I shouldn't have been in and just people in my life and just expectations that they were having of me. Like, no one really knew who I was. Everyone was just kind of treating me like an idea that they wanted to be a part of. I don't know, I was a very weird kid. I was a very kind of all over the place kid when I was in high school. I feel like everyone just wanted to jump on that and be a part of it. And no one knew who I was and no one cared who I was. They just wanted to be involved with whatever crazy mess I was getting involved with next. Because I always had a story. I always had something weird and strange going on. But that wasn't me. And I realized that most of the people in my life, like not even some of them, but like most of the people in my life were not healthy. And they didn't know me, and they didn't like me for who I was. They only liked me for who they thought I was, or who they wanted me to be. And so I had to cut all of those people out. And now I only have a few friends, but at least all of them like me and know me for who I am. You just kind of have to find a meaning to your life that isn't worth sacrificing for anything. And I just love art so much, and I just see so much beauty in the world in every little fucking flake of it that I realized that to give that up because I didn't want to be the person that people wanted me to be was so ridiculous. Like there is so much life for you to make for yourself no matter what it is and the change is difficult but it's so worth it. I would change anything about myself and anything about my life that I needed to so that I could continue living happily in the world that I do. Because I love my life. And I love the world. And I just want to keep seeing it. I think that might be it for my first video. I feel kind of emotionally drained talking about all that stuff. But I am going to make another video more talking about um, the mental health system and how it treats trans people and the way doctors diagnose people and the use of medication to treat things that should not be treated with medication and lots of other topics that need to be talked about other than my own personal experience. I'm sorry if this video was a bit heavy. I'll try to get the other one up soon. And I will see you later. Peace out.